Okay, folks. So today we're going to be wedging wedging some clay. We're going to make a pot. And uh, here I am looking at the camera. <laughs> so uh, here I am wedging a little bit faster. So you take your clay out of the bag. And get your hands, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna throw that on the wheel." No, uh, uh, you gotta put it back in the bag. Get some, uh, get some other clay. Apparently, for no reason, we could have used it, but this is just clay that I've already wedged up a little bit. So I'm gonna start wedging it, and this is how to wedge. This is what's called uh, known as spiral kneading or spiral wedging, though technically wedging is more of like a English slicing technique. But I'll get into that later. Um, now, if you notice, I put this little indent here. And if you follow that, it'll actually work its way around the around the pot. Or it already did. I missed that. Yeah. And it follows that direction here and goes from the top of the spiral down through the cone to the bottom and wraps around this, this tongue. And, and uh, if it looks like a seashell, like a conch, you know you're doing it right. Now I'm just uh, wrapping up the tail of it and rolling it like that to get rid of the creases on the bottoms. There it is. Now I'm going to rip it in half because I didn't need all of that and get about a good chunk and just uh, do a little bit more wedging just to get it back into that nice shape, that nice uh, teardrop shape for throwing. There it is. And since I got another piece, I'll just do the same thing to this one. Now you don't want to just throw the clay right down on the dry bat. You got to take a wet sponge and put a thin layer of thin layer of water over it. There you go. Then you take your piece, throw it down as close to the center as you can get it. Then with wet hands, you start centering it. You start pushing in and down, down at an angle. Cuz you kind of want to almost push it off center, and in doing that, it'll evenly press on all sides of it as it goes around. Here I'm uh, coning it up. That's where you squeeze in from two directions so it can't go down because of the wheel, so it has to go up. And then you bring it back down. And you want to make it kind of a gumdrop shape eventually, once it's all centered. And you know it's centered when it doesn't, you know, bounce around and, and push against your hand when it just stays very much in the center. And by looking at the edge, if you look at the edge of it when you're doing this, it can kind of help tell when it is centered. And here it's centered, and I'm opening it up, getting a nice flat bottom, bringing it in. Because it's, uh, it's much easier to control the clay when you bring it in before you bring it up. Because you don't want to start with like a bowl shape and then try to make that taller. So here I am doing a pull where the outside fingers are pushing against the inside fingers. And the clay, it thins the clay, and then therefore, you know, allows you to bring it up. Don't forget to keep adding water so that you don't have too much drag so you don't just so your fingers don't pull the clay off. Now this is a pool that I use with a sponge and the sponge even though it has a little bit more drag than wet fingers it's really consistent so when I'm doing a nice heavy pull at the beginning of a pot I like to use a sponge on the outside. And here I'm looking for a tool. There we go. It's a wooden rib. I like this one it's, uh, in particular, just the shape of it. It's really nice. And I'm going to help strengthen and straighten the sides. And it also pulls off some of the slip. And uh, when you pull off the slip, you would either have to put water on or use a tool like this metal rib. This metal rib is nice because I like to finish shaping pots with it, and you don't need water on the pot when you use it. Now I'm going to be pushing out with the inside and kind of pushing it into the uh, into the rib, into the shape that I make with the metal rib on the outside. And that gives it that belly, because we're going to make a bottle out of this. So now I'm closing in the top. And when you close in, uh, this is called collaring. When you close in the top by collaring it, it actually thickens the clay, so it allows you to do another pull. And I want to do this pull before it gets too thin that I can't get my hands in there. Now, when I was doing this, I noticed the rim got a little uneven. 
So I decided to cut it off with the needle tool, which, yeah, which makes it nice and flat again, and that'll allow you to continue pulling without it going way off center. Gonna yeah, clean up some of the slip with the metal rib harder, and shape yeah. it and compress it. And getting that slip off of the outside really helps keep the clay from uh, getting too soft. You can also use the metal rib to help collar in the throat of the the neck of the bottle, I guess. What happens next will blow your tits off. This is kind of a boring part. We might need to cut this out. Uh, and then I'm going to clean up the foot here with the uh, wooden stick tool, I guess I'll call it. I'm not sure if this thing has a name. And uh, I like to, yeah, just do a nice scraping, cutting kind of action. I'm going to get this, uh, yeah, curved shape with the curved side of it. There we go. I'm happy with that. And then cut away cut underneath it a little bit of a bevel so that it'll kind of give the form a little bit of lift so it won't look so, so bottom heavy. And I'm just going to soften that edge that I created with a sponge, with a wet sponge. Then with the metal rib, I'll get rid of any of those lines down there at the very bottom and make a nice smoother pot. Now I need to bring in the opening of this pot, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit with a sponge, round it over. I want a nice wide flared like bud face type of opening to this vase. I don't know why I said vase. I think I normally say vase. I think I was just trying to be all fancy. So, man, the look on my the look on my vase right now. <laughs> and there it is. All done. 